Hello, everyone. Is my audio coming through? Loud and clear. Excellent. I just put the notes in the chat. Perfect. And I'm going to screen share for people who are on their phones. I can find the right window. Thanks, Erica. And Erica, while we while we're waiting for people to just get started, um, Erica, I thought it'd be nice if you would um, be willing to just kind of give an intro to what the policy group is and what you've been talking about. You know, maybe in the last few months, just to because um, I think we've got a lot of new people who haven't necessarily heard about what that group's doing. Would you be up for that today? Okay, sure. Great. And then we're following the uh, briefer check-in um, format, which is that people annotate your name if you're new or if you're the lead of um, one of the projects and so that we can make sure that the people who are active leaders in the group introduce themselves and new people, or if you have security related things that may or may not be interested to the group that um, you want to report or work that you've done um, as part of SIG security in the last week to um, give updates on. Um, that would be fabulous. And then can we do we have some volunteers who are willing to scribe since I'm facilitating. It would be great if we can have someone who's not me be scribe. And then I'll just put in the notes again for people who might have just gotten here. All right. So, um, oh, sorry, Emily, I put that on the wrong column. Erica. Uh, so um, I'm just going to dive in with a little bit of, um, oh, we don't have, uh, we need some scribes. Volunteers. Kristen, welcome back. It's been a while. Are you willing to scribe? Sure, I can do that. I'm just trying to find the document at the moment. Here, it's in the chat. Or... Yeah, yeah. I, I have a link. All <laughs> right. Justin Capos, would you be willing to help scribe? If you're in front of a computer. Oh, Ash. Ash has volunteered. Thank you, Ash. So Christian and Ash will be scribes. Fabulous. Really, really appreciate that help there. Um, uh, so I'm going to add to the agenda a, um, or we'll just do it as part of introductions. Erica, you can, unless you want to be, if we have extra time, you can kind of go deeper into things, but I just think an overview of what you've been doing would be great. And then, um, and maybe you can prep to put your, um, the doc, you have a great running doc of meetings and you can add that when we get there. So diving in, uh, my name is Sarah Allen. I'm one of the co-chairs of SIG Security and um, we are in the new year, doing every other week a working session presentation. 
ish. We sometimes the presentation um, uh, scheduling um, can can you know like needs to be moved around a little bit. So um, we will kind of on balance try to have half working group, half um, presentations. But the um, next week, Jonathan Meadows is going to be presenting some open source curricula um, that um, he's been involved in developing around teaching um, cloud native security. I think it's specific to Kubernetes. Um, and, uh, and I'm excited that he's on deck. And then um, the weekend, the week after that, we will have um, provided there ready one a presentation, I believe, from the Spiffy um, Spire Security Assessment. And so this is our second working session in a row, but we have um, some topics on the agenda. If we run out of things to say, we'll end the meeting, um, but we'll start with check-ins. So Erica, can you um, introduce yourself and a little bit about the policy team? Hi, I'm Erica. I work at Red Hat uh, via the CoreOS team. Uh, so anyone going through acquisitions, I'm now correct. Uh, but but uh, yeah, so I'm part of the Kubernetes policy working group. The policy kind of works into policy in general for cloud native security. Policy is a kind of large thing that everyone cares or needs and cares about and thinks is really boring, but I happen to think is very interesting of how do we govern our clusters and our cloud in a secure and automated way that works for this cloud native era. So uh, Howard is with me and Robert are the other co-leads we meet every other Wednesday. So not this Wednesday, but next week at, which I'm going to get the time right one of these days. I messed up last week. <laughs> and, so, uh, I believe that, that yeah. should be 3 p.m., which is, yeah, those are it. And um, 3 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, here, do you have the notes I can give, give yeah. some of the projects kind of we're looking at? We like to uh, have it kind of overviews of various policy related projects some active work we're going at policy violations custom resource to unify some of the policy kind of plug-in projects as a kind of a first start so we're discussing that as well as kind of have some other investigative kind of trying out different some formal verification methods for verifying policy configurations and these various tools. And then just more mundane discussions of what's gonna happen, pod security policies and the like. Here are our notes. Uh, I actually just copied them into the notes, Erica, so. Perfect. <laughs> uh, if you're interested in policy and geeking out about it, please come join us. And we would love to have more participants always. Great, and I hadn't heard that Robert was co-leading the group as had joined your leadership team. So please yeah. um, submit a PR to the, because I, we had some, we have some PRs like in crossing each other. So mm -hmm. um, I last week added the um, policy team to the root repo. And okay. um, so yeah, feel, feel free to PR in Robert or Robert, if you're here, PR yourself. And so that we can keep this up to date so that to spread awareness of the great work you're doing. And, um, and so for the folks who are new, we consider to be policy essential for security because how can we secure things if we don't know what we're trying to do? <laughs> and so, um, so that's why the policy working group is part of um, SIG security. Um, and then the, at the moment, it's the same group of people that does Kubernetes policy so that, that's why it's kind of one group. One group of people, two structural groups. Um, but it's efficient because we have a, a small set of awesome people focused on policy. Is that a good summary, Erica? That works for me. <laughs> OK, great. Um, and so I hear from Justin Kapos is um, intermittently online. 
Um, he's going to skip the update for now because of connectivity issues, but he is our security assessment facilitator. So ping him on Slack or if you have questions about security assessments. Um, next, um, Emily Fox. She just introduced herself as the, one of the leads of Cloud Native Security Day, and then we'll cover your agenda item later. Um, I am here talking for both myself and Michael Ducey, who's not on the call because he's traveling. Um, I am uh, one of the co-leads for the Cloud Native Security Day Amsterdam 2020. Um, I do have an agenda item update, but I wanted to let everybody know the website is now live for CFP submissions. So that's very exciting. And if you have someone capable of potentially sponsoring, um, uh, Prospectus is also on the site. So that's all I have for now. Great. And I don't know if you have connectivity to type and give us the URL that I don't have handy, um, or we can dig it up right afterwards. I'll pull it up from last time. Oh, super. Thank you so much. Um, so I think that those are all of the official updates. And so we'll dive into the, um, if I just wanted to have check-ins in case we, do we have anybody from, we covered the policy working group. Do we have anybody from SIG Auth or any of the other um, working groups that wants to uh, give an update? All right. So um, our agenda, sorry, I'm finding it. Emily, we're going to talk about, there's some chatter on the group about Cloud Native Security Day and whether we want to, what the agenda is. So you want to dive in? Sure thing. Um, so we usually meet on Tuesdays at around one o'clock. Um, and yesterday, I believe, was our last uh, just uh, co-lead session. So we'll be opening it up to the rest of the folks that have kindly volunteered to assist us. Um, so one of the things that we're talking about and kind of need feedback from everybody on is um, Typically, Amsterdam or any of the KubeCon, Cloud Native Con, European um, instances of the conference are a smaller audience. Um, and when we did this security day in North America, we had a open spaces kind of forum. And there were a fair amount of people that knew what it was and really enjoyed it. A lot of people didn't know what it was, were exposed to it, also enjoyed it. And there were some people that were still kind of confused and didn't get it. Um, so we felt that there was good conversation going on with that. But this space was constrained, so it didn't necessarily allow itself to be the best that it could be. Now, fast forward to Amsterdam, we are having space limitations. So we cannot do a capture the flag and an open spaces, um, but we could do an open spaces or all briefings or a capture the flag in the afternoon. So that's kind of the time block that we're looking at. So there are some pros and cons to each. Um, it was talked about that doing briefings in the afternoon creates a full day of briefings, which is just like some of the other um, activities that go on at KubeCon, Cloud Native Con. And one of the things that makes us different is that we don't do the full day of briefings. Um, but still, they're easily accessible for the uh, larger audience. Everybody has the same expectation for what's going to happen. Um, then there is open spaces. Uh, this would be our first time doing Security Day in Europe. So there's a new audience, new folks showing up that may or may not be familiar with the open spaces concept and um, just getting people involved in like how to have those dialogues and leading them along. So there's that. And then capture the flag. So this has been brought up a lot by the community, um, potentially doing a capture the flag activity. And for those of you that don't know what it is, Basically, it's when you have teams working or individuals working together on teams against each other to capture and defend their snippet of code or a particular file. And there's more information online. Just Google capture the flag security. A whole bunch of websites come up. So we had some folks express interest in running a capture the flag in the afternoon for security day. We believe that they are still interested, but there is concern about how technically involved that is from an audience perspective. Not everybody coming to Security Day has a security researcher um, or a hacking background. So there's that concern. Um, but we figure we can offset that by making sure that they're on teams where individuals with those technical skills work um, can give them that level of exposure so they can see how to think about things differently. Um, there's also 
the logistics of setting it up. The space that we have only sits about 150 people, so breaking up the teams. Uh, benefits are it gets more security folks coming to a typical developer conference and giving them that uh, cross pollination of ideas back and forth between the two communities that typically are very um, disparate. And Ian Coldwater has talked about this a lot, um, or yeah, Clearwater has talked about this a lot in some of their presentations about how security and development communities are very different and they don't usually talk. So there's a lot of pros and cons. There's a conversation going on in the Slack channel that I'd like everybody to kind of respond to with their opinions. Um, that way we actually have it documented and can update the ticket and then the websites with what the decision is. Open discussion. I get this is this is Tabitha. I guess I'm sad that I didn't see that discussion on Slack. So I'm going to go in and check that out right now. But, you know, having having run a couple of these types of things, um, you know, at a security conference, it seems that you get 10 to 15% participation. And so if we're talking about a much more developer focused sort of thing, then yeah, I agree with everybody who's concerned about whether whether we can get the right draw and if it's sort of mandatory fun then then something that is as free form as a ctf yeah seems like it's going to turn people off really um whereas something that's more like a walkthrough but but something that's more like a walkthrough you wouldn't want to do for everybody having to be there you know so so if there's more than one track i think that that a, a walk through a CTF ish walk through kind of demo like like what was initially proposed a while ago could be really could be really good. But if it's single track, then then maybe it's a cool idea that's just not right. It was my my yeah. thoughts to hear anybody else's too. And that's uh, so just a reminder that, that because the space is so small, we don't have access to other areas to do multi track, which is what we would really love to have. So, doing this kind of event in Amsterdam is probably not going to be possible, but we want to have the conversation and explore it and see what other ideas are being generated around this. We did get feedback that folks wanted something a little bit more hands on. Are there other people who have thoughts on this, both people who have done CTF activities before and maybe have a perspective about what it's like to have people with less experience doing that and people who've never done a CTF before who capture the flag before who might enjoy it or find it like I probably won't go because of it. So, hi, I've never done one before, um, but it sounds like a really interesting idea and it based on the pros and cons list that we already have, it seems like people are really putting a lot of thought into it already. Um, so personally, if I were there, I would find this interesting. I can see why others would also find it interesting and enjoy having a hands-on thing to do. It does feel a little tangential to the work that the group does on a regular basis, but it is highlighting some things that are good to know about security. So that is nice. And just as a chair, I don't think that what this group is doing on a regular basis at any point in time should necessarily influence what we would do in the future, because I think we we're kind of going through a bunch of different projects. And just because we're doing a lot of like writing things down and providing written materials doesn't necessarily mean that that's what this group does from my perspective. So sure. But and I, I, think, think, I think, go ahead. I was just going to say that I, I see where you're coming from and we can, as the sort of central group thinking about the subject for CNCF, we're basically providing a venue for people to have this kind of event. So. Yeah. Um, other um, perspectives from the group? Uh, yeah, hi, this is Ricardo. So I've never done a CTF before, so I think it might be a good idea if you, you had like a, you know, two different 
tracks. I mean, I know it might be hard because the space is not that big, but, uh, you know, some people might want to have like a beginner type of CTF and then some other people who are more experienced and have done it before, they might want to just, you know, do uh, something else like it or be on a different track, right? So, um, yeah, so, or, or, or I, I divide the, the people who want to participate in different groups. Yeah, I think that's a good perspective. One idea from organizing things, like I went to a like a diversity training once where they, um, at the beginning of the breakout session, they did like a spectrograph, which is like where every, you ask a question and everybody lines up according to their answer. Um, where people were like, how familiar are you with diversity stuff? And on the, you know, on one side of the room was, this is all new to me. Um, <laughs> I, uh, you know, I'm here to learn. And on the right side was, I could teach this class. <laughs> and everybody lined up with, you know, where they were on that spectrum. And then they divided the groups by like the people who were next to each other. So that was really great because I was somebody who was like, oh my God, I have to take a 101 diversity class as a manager training. And I teach things like this and I kind of am un like, I appreciate it, but I'm kind of tired of the intro stuff. And then I was with like super experienced people, right? And then the novices were together, right? So that's an idea for Emily, if we can move forward with that as a way to like divide people. Um, and also I'll just chime in like, I've never done a capture the flag because I'm more on the developer, you know, the, the creator of things and trying to build things that are secure rather than attacking things to make sure they're secure. And I just think it would be really neat, yet I would be reluctant to just dive into one with the professionals with no experience, you know? So I think this would, like, I, I would be super excited personally, separate from the so, true thing. So one of the ways that we had initially discussed potentially breaking it up to make it more manageable for those that aren't super technical or haven't done a CTF before, was going through and probably like every 15 or 20 minutes of the activities talking through where folks are what should be happening what they should be seeing why it's important those kinds of things to kind of help if they're not actively hands on the keyboard participating we're reinforcing the concepts of what's going on and then for those that haven't completed challenge one two three whatever it is providing them with the mechanism or the instructions to get them past that challenge so that that was some of the other stuff that we talked about but it's a real balance between we don't want to turn people away we want to try this new idea how do, how do we make that work? And I think dividing up the teams based off of experience is, is important, but we'll need to figure out how do we do that either day of or uh, at some point um, before then to ensure that we have the right mix of experience. Because if we only have four or five people that have done CTFs before, feel really confident in their skills, and we've got 145 other people, that is not going to work. Yeah, another thing, another idea is if, you know, there are people with the time to prep is to have like something that is more like, you know, some written material that's more like a tutorial on how to use the tools with a little CTF thrown in that some of the groups could really be doing more of a step-by-step -step thing, even if we don't have a separate room, right? We could have be like, oh, groups A, B, and C are learning how to use the tools and walking through tutorials together and, you know, like, experiment like doing some like basically kind of a walk through near each other with a you know per knowledgeable person on the team what what is what is the goal of the cncf security day what do we want to convey to the people that participate i think that is that is important to to uh, decide on on how we want to do it right because that, that seems to be unclear to me is it to teach about what the sync does is it that security is important is it about you know, what specific security tools are available to them to address the, uh, uh, I guess, the, 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 the threat du jour. Um, what, what is it? Have we decided? So the, goal, 
Go ahead, Emily. The goal of the day is, is captured in the ticket number 305, which I've linked in the notes. Um, the goal of the day is to bring together the broader cloud native security community and a community oriented space to discuss and share current challenges and solutions in cloud native security. And we've been really pushing that open collaboration and communication. Mm -hmm. um, we did this last year through the open spaces paradigm in the afternoon. We also combined presentations from the community with that to talk about stuff. Um, I believe we had at least one talk about the, the Kubernetes security audits, um, and we had several other great ones. So doing, adding the CTF capability into Security Day in lieu of open spaces changes how that collaboration and that community involvement can happen from a different perspective. So instead of forcing people to sit around a table and talk, talk about a particular topic of interest to them, we're exposing them to a different avenue related to security when it comes to cloud native products, be it them getting a more hands-on technical exposure through doing it themselves or shoulder sur surfing with another individual who's talking them through like what it is that they're doing and why they're doing it, but also to provide them that community involvement, that they're meeting new people, that there are different skills associated with this, and mm -hmm. that we're not leaving them to like, you guys are beginners, you stay over here, and these are security experts, and they're going to be over here, and you guys will never talk to each other. And we, yeah, we don't so want that to happen. Is, we want sharing to happen. Out, right? So building, building the, the, the community. Um, yes. Is, is op open spaces is, is an unconference style, right? So you need multiple rooms. Is, is that what it is about? I, I, yeah. I'm, and that's why we had trouble last time is because we didn't really have the multiple rooms we yeah, divided okay. the room up and it 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 got loud people had trouble hearing um not to say that it wasn't a success a lot of people really enjoyed it but it did make it very difficult for navigating the room and high, trying to have a dialogue yeah. and with ctf activities um it's been a while since i've been to one but i'm they're either really loud or extremely quiet um, depending on the team dynamics. So with that large room and 150 people, even if we were to divide the room in half and say half of the, half of the folks that want to do the CTF over here and the other half of you that want to come over here, having somebody present or do a talk can be distracting to the activities that are going on in a CTF. Yeah. So I have a question in here. Um, one thing that is striking me about the description of CTF is that I, it doesn't sound like you're required to actually be in the same physical space. Has anyone ever done a virtual capture the flag? A couple of I folks have. are going to be doing a, a virtual capture the flag on Twitter in Kubernetes land this Friday. Cool. Okay, so I'll watch for that. Um, mostly because I'm looking up, realizing like we've got a lot of space in the calendars between March and November, which is our next gigantic gathering of things. So maybe we can look towards being able to say, if we don't want to be able to do this in person directly, maybe we do something over the summer virtually. That's not a bad so idea. I, I've done a couple of CTFs, uh, primarily at reInvent, and uh, they or the, they have actually a few different CTFs, and for one of them, it, the CTF that sort of goes on throughout the conference, uh, they actually have two separate locations. They have like an official area and then a, a sort of lounge area, and uh, it was trouble finding them. Uh, you run across sort of two issues, or I came across two issues with the virtual. Uh, one is uh, you had to go to a location in order to get like the room code or whatever, um, which is certainly manageable, uh, but something to be aware of if you're trying to not have it completely open to the world. Uh, but from a more practical standpoint, uh, the issue was uh, if there were announcements of how do you make sure that people were aware of it or if you are handing out awards, uh, what are, what's going to be the process. So if you have, I've been to a few other CTS where 
it was completely online and you were expected to just be in a Slack channel where all the announcements were made. Uh, so you could potentially do it something like that or a hybrid um, to try to mitigate some of those issues or concerns. So before we just dive into the, I, I like the, thanks for Amy for the suggestion and whoever was just on the phone for like a little elaboration on the virtual stuff. I want to go back to like, it sounded like, I mean, it's certainly technically possible for us to do it on site. And, um, and I think that we've heard some, um, some people who like, so if there are, to Christian's question about the goal of this, when we did it before, um, when we, the initial planning of the one for San Diego, I had at least thought that the majority of people who came would be from our SIG. And so it would be more an extension of the work that we're doing in the SIG to build community within the SIG. Um, and then it turned out that there were, it was oversubscribed with a lot of people who were new to KubeCon or new to, had never heard of the SIG. And, um, and the content was all, you know, just it was about cloud native security. And so I think that, and we do have, um, I'm not sure that everybody knows, we have two slots during the KubeCon, Cloud Native Con conference, one for an intro presentation and one for a deep drive, which those are really about the SIG itself. Um, although we have had some conversations that maybe those should have um, more, a little more cloud native security content content because we have also people coming to learn about cloud native security. So um, I think we could do a better job with those descriptions, but just wanted to let everybody know that this is one of three, you know, three things that the SIG is doing um, at uh, cloud native con in Amsterdam. So um, are there people who haven't spoken up who have ideas or thoughts or feedback or how you, would you personally enjoy or not so excited about this thing? I have spoken up. Can I still say something? Please. <laughs> Um, so, so there, there are two other um, uh, kind of methods of, of, of uh, unconference style that I'm aware of that I'm not sure if you have discussed in, in one of the previous meetings. One is World Cafe that we have done before where you have separate tables. Each table has a host and people rotate through the tables. Um, I've seen that work very well at, a, uh, at an internal conference here at, at Google. Um, and it, was, it worked surprisingly well. Um, so, so that might be an option. It's called World Cafe. There's a Wikipedia page for it. I actually just had to look it up because I forgot how it was called. And the other one was, I think, called a fishbowl, which where, where people sit, uh, you have a, a number of people sit in front on the stage and somebody that has something to say can, can join and somebody else drops off. And so you rotate through. It's a little less participatory, but, but you, you get different um, um, people to speak up you need people to be relatively comfortable to be in, in front. So that may not be uh, the best, but I think for the community sharing that World Cafe, I, I've seen work very well. Yeah, thanks for those suggestions. Um, Just yeah, tag for, on. Go ahead. Who is there? Yeah, sorry. I, I was going to say for the uh, on-site capture the flag, probably a, a good compliment is to have a proctor that's a member of SIG security. That to keep in mind that there may be a lot of outsiders, a lot of newcomers. But it also makes sure that all teams make similar progress, whether the team is balanced or there's uh, mixed experiences and backgrounds. Uh, that way, uh, the proctor or facilitator can make sure they all uh, have the same takeaways, they all get the same experience, make sure everyone, if someone is weak on the keyboard, like kind of supplement for that or uh, just keep it balanced, just having a, a dedicated uh, tutor in a way. Uh, and uh, another similar approach to dealing with the skills gap uh, is if you have built into the CTF of uh, there's the challenge and then there's a number of hints that you can choose to unlock and if you take a hint then you just get fewer points but the 
idea is that you're still learning and you're still achieving it, but uh, you aren't necessarily degrading the overall for the higher achievers who are able to get it, they can get full points. Um, but hopefully everyone is still learning and in a sort of self-service model uh, because uh, A, if you have virtual people joining in, uh, relying on proctors may not be practical as well as if there's a lot of people, it can be hard to make sure everyone's getting their questions answered at the same time. Uh, the other thought, sort of going back on what Sarah was saying about splitting people up by uh, skill level, um, I was just going to say another CTF that I've gone to, uh, at the outset of the CTF, they sort of put people in similar lanes of, are you an expert, medium, completely new? And instead of grouping people together by that, they actually forced a mix of different experience levels into groups. So you would have one experience, or really experienced, um, and a few medium or uh, less knowledgeable people and try to even it out. Uh, the challenge with that is a, that's not necessarily, <laughs> conducive for <laughs> excuse me um, virtual and I think Emily mentioned before concerns about uh, heavily weighting of if we have lots and lots of new people and only a few really experienced people that can be hard to even out um, so uh, just another approach with its own pros and cons there Thanks for those ideas, Stephen. Um, we do have, we have a, um, by a chat, we have another agenda item. So I want to just open the floor for feedback and then we can follow up on Slack and um, the uh, organizing team can take the feedback and do something. And I want to emphasize to everybody, we consider this to be a continued experiment. So just because we, like, if we do that this time, that doesn't necessarily set a pattern where we would do it every time. Right, and and to piggyback off of um, Sarah's comment, uh, there is a thread in Slack. It's in the SIG security channel, not the events channel. Um, so if you have an idea or you kind of want to reinforce something that you said on the phone, go ahead um, and post it on that thread. And then the events team um, for security day will uh, pull all of them together and discuss them at our next meeting. And hopefully by the end of the meeting, we'll have a decision on what it is that we're going to do and we'll share that with everyone. Great. Any other comments on this topic? I guess the one trade-off is how much infrastructure can we build versus how scrappy and informal the dictates, how much time we can put in versus reality when the date is. All right, so yeah, everybody chime in on Slack and we'll move on. We have some um, bookkeeping to do on the cloud custodian um, issue. It's a cloud custodian self-assessment where I've linked issue number 307 to the um, agenda. And so I think we do have somebody from cloud custodian and maybe you can just um, give us a little context by letting us know where you are at with your self-assessment. Hi, yeah, this is John Mark. Um, yeah, we've had a couple of reviewers sign up. We, um, we were going through the self-assessment. We were adding some threat modeling uh, information. Um, I think one thing that we, one question we had was getting a lead reviewer assigned so that we can, once we get everything assembled, we can actually uh, push through the review. Um, so I'm hoping that, you know, sometime this month we can like, get through most of the requirements. Anyway. Yeah, um, so um, we have, so thanks for that. And the self-assessment, is it linked from in here? So it yeah, is so, linked in the issue, I believe. At the very top, right. one of the links uh, looks goes to it. The okay, 
Great. Right. And, and when we, we have some um, more information that we're going to add there. We just haven't um, updated that document yet, um, but we will do so shortly. <laughs> that's true. And then thanks for flagging this because we basically the first step is um, the lead reviewer will take a do a step of what I will just for now call naive questions, right? The, like, <laughs> I don't know your project. I'm reading this and I don't understand these things. So that when the security team does a security review, right, probably half of the body of the self-assessment is just preamble, like this is how the right. thing works. Um, and so then, then they can focus more on the, you know, they can just come up to speed and focus more on the security stuff rather than the clarity of the narrative. So um, okay. uh, Ash, I think is on the call. Robert, I don't know if you are, if I was wondering if one of the, what we want is somebody who's participated in a security review before be willing to do the lead so that they understand the process. Um, so I was wondering if anybody on the call happens to want to step up and be lead reviewer. Otherwise, I'll, I, I think Justin was having communication issues so I can volunteer to rabble rouse offline. Rabble rouse. Um, yeah, somebody mentioned Erica, but I don't want to like. Yeah. I have felt I am willing to step up, but I don't haven't done it before. So if, oh, if okay. we would prefer to have someone who has been involved, that makes sense to me, and I would love to, therefore, you know, step into the normal reviewer. I think it might be that I don't know if okay. those people who have the experience don't have the time. <laughs> so, um, Erica, I think it would be really high value if you were a normal viewer because we're a normal. That would be awesome. Uh, <laughs> on the security review team, <laughs> um, what we're trying to do, and I, I have a to-do item to go and clarify the docs because the there's like a this conflict review thing where um, I did. I'll just give a quick update on the conflict reviewer question because we worked very hard to write that down clearly, and in retrospect, it's not clear at all. Um, <laughs> but I ch checked in with at least Dan and um, Shaw, who's one of our co-chairs. And um, the intent was that only if there was an actual conflict would we have a two thirds chair review of it. Uh, so okay. I, we need to clarify what do we mean by a conflict? Because one of the soft conflicts is, which doesn't prevent anything, is um, I'm contributing to the project. And so what's not clear is we do oh. want someone on the team <laughs> to have some experience with the project, if that's at all possible, but we just don't want everybody on the team to be Understood. Um, yeah, no, like no, no, no. insider. So that's what I wanna clarify. And then we'll sort of catch up on the um, review of that. But Erica, since you have um, you know experience in the cloud, in the um, policy space, it would just be amazing. Um, to have you on the team and then I'll just check in with people who've been through it before because the lead reviewer's primary role really is to keep the process moving so obviously that sounds excellent to me because I was a little bit like near the headlights <laughs> <laughs> um, and definitely will feel better next round having you know gone through it as a regular reviewer super no worries all right so, so um go ahead so I'll, I'll catch up with you, I guess, I don't know, a couple of days just to check Yeah, out, if or... you don't hear from me in the next couple of days, ping me on Slack and that'll okay. um, uh, nudge me or um, I will I can do that. nudge other people again. So that'd be great. Thank you. Um, so are there any other announcements or things that people want feedback from the group on? All right, so then I think I will end the meeting and give you all back 15 minutes. Please chime in on Slack and GitHub issues. And um, thanks all for coming to our working session and see you next week for Thank Jonathan Meadows' presentation. Goodbye, everyone. Bye-bye, Sarah. Bye. -bye. Bye.